Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, our Son. I'm Peter Owen Jones. I'm a vicar in the Church of England, and I'm turning my world upside down. I'm going on an extreme spiritual journey to find oneness with God in the eyes of three world religions. I'm seeking the spiritual enlightenment that I believe we in Britain once had and have now lost. It's not going to be easy. This journey into alien worlds will test my physical and mental endurance right to the limit. I can't go any further. I'll be living with the Kung Fu monks of central China, the wandering mystics of the Indian Himalayas, this is God in colour, and the Christian hermits of the Egyptian desert. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. I need to explore the minds of men and women who have renounced the material world forever and who claim to be at one with their Creator. I want to test their beliefs for myself. In this program, I'm going to live with the Chan Buddhist monks of China. They've thrown away their scriptures and their rule books, and for them, there is no past, no future, only the now, and the body moves created over 1,500 years of martial arts practice. I know that their divine knowledge has been won by hardship, pain, and privation. I do get a bit freaked out at night. And to learn from them, I have to become an extreme pilgrim. Why is it all about you? They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving and receiving of rings. It is therefore with great pleasure that I proclaim that they are now husband and wife. I was going to say you may kiss the bride. But... <laughs> I used to work in advertising, but 18 years ago I got a calling. I've been in the Church of England ever since. As is usual at this time, I have lost, mislaid. I look after three parishes in the Sussex Downs, and I really love my job, with its ancient traditions and great emphasis on human love. Finnegan, I baptize you in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And there's a bit for you at the back. <laughs> a bit for you down there. The Sussex Downs are a wonderful place for me to live and to draw inspiration from. But behind all this beauty, we live in a ravenously secular world. We seem to have lost respect for our surroundings and each other. Most of all, we've lost our spirituality, our stillness of mind. The current state of the environment perfectly describes our current relationship with it. Pollution. I feel a deep need within myself to shed the load of modern life and discover spirituality, that closeness to my maker, through simple living. For the last month I've been in training for a trip to the famous Shaolin Monastery in China. I'm told it's the place where one can attain spiritual enlightenment in the practice of extreme martial arts, which is about as physical as you can get. It is the expression of the divine within the physical. The Church of England in particular is incredibly intellectual. Huge libraries full of books and theological bookshops and all this. It's all incredibly intellectual. That we don't do anything physical. It's going to be very challenging, I, I think, indeed. Beijing home to 15 million people and growing. There's a river of humanity at every intersection. And communist China, like everywhere else in the world, is now a hungry consumer. And the days of cyclists in Mao suits are long gone. It makes my impending trip to a place of spiritual enlightenment all the more intriguing. 
It's a seven-hour train journey from Beijing out to Henan province in the very center of China. The Shaolin Monastery occupies a central place in Chinese cultural history. It's the ancestral home of all martial arts. Without it, there would be no Kung Fu, no Tai Chi, and certainly no Bruce Lee. As I get nearer, I wonder if I'm up to it. I'm very unfit. I um, smoke and I drink and I have, a, have these addictions which... Um, which we all have to a certain degree, although that's no excuse. And I know that there is no gain in this instance without um, a good deal of pain. After 500 miles of flat plain, the Songshang Mountains rear up suddenly through the haze. It's these peaks that attracted the first Chang Buddhist monks some 1,500 years ago. Today, modern pilgrims come to learn martial arts at the many kung fu schools that have grown up around the monastery. The temple itself lies at the head of a valley cut deep into the mountains. Well, that's where I'm hoping to learn about the meaning of non-attachment and the meaning of what the Buddhists call voidness. That's where I'm hoping to learn, down there. But it's not where I'm staying. For the next few weeks, I'll be staying here at the Tagao School, home to some 30,000 martial arts students. I think it will give me a chance to learn the martial arts moves that are practiced in the monastery. It's a shortcut, but I'm thinking ahead. If I can't do them, the path to any level of enlightenment will be difficult. But the pupils here look worryingly young. I met a very interesting man on the train called Mr. Ching Du, who told me under no circumstances should a man of my age be doing Kung Fu. So that filled me with confidence, of course. I'm shown to a room reserved for foreigners by Mr. Li Hu, the principal. Oh, man. Oh, an ashtray. How encouraging. Oh, Mr. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. The training, hmm. how hard for me, old... No harder at 48. all. No hard at all. No hard at all. Oh, you can gradually, yeah, okay. slowly, okay. practice your suffering, okay. endurance, okay. and your strength. Okay. That sounds utterly terrifying. I can't say that I'm a Kung Fu fan, hmm. but I hope that I will uh, also be stronger hmm. and more healthy hmm. than I am. I can say not only stronger, yeah. smart. Smart? Yes. I need to be smarter too. Yes. Yes, you're right. Not to fight. No. Okay. Not to sin. Okay. Only smart. Okay. With the spirit. I need to understand this and to feel it. Mm. To feel, to feel. I think understand isn't enough. No, okay. We must enlighten ourselves. Yes. I'm dying to begin my training here, but next morning, before dawn, I have an important appointment at the monastery. I've come face to face with 1,500 years of tradition. The abbot and 80 monks of all ages at their morning devotional, a ritual normally absolutely forbidden to outsiders. It's everything I've been expecting about Buddhism, and it reeks of ancient mysticism. <laughs> 
Today, millions of Chinese are nominally Buddhists. The one-party communist state has never, even in the days of Mao Zedong, banned the practice of religion outright. It is allowed, but it must come second place to the dictates of the Communist Party. Even so, Shaolin has managed to survive the dark days of both the Civil War and the Cultural Revolution, when monasteries were burnt and monks persecuted. As dawn breaks, I begin to see the magnitude of the task ahead. The monks here claim that these moves bring them inner stillness, so to learn them is my goal. These days, the temple exports its ancient traditions right across the world. Uh, it also has a head of public relations. Must, uh, he gives me a minder, Yenje, for the duration of my stay here. Very nice to meet you. And he summons a fighting monk to initiate me to some of the moves. Pull that a mobile. Pull that a mobile. Quarter to seven in the morning. Well, that's been halfway through the day, really. Here I come. I feel like a bit of a git in these shorts, actually. They all look so great in their robes. And I just look like some bloke that's just tipped up from Warrington. One, one thing at a time. Oh, my rod. Right. Okay. 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 You only. You only strike hard. Strike hard. Mm. Thank you. Strike and hard. Strike hard. And swift. And swiftly. And swiftly. <coughs> Are you sure? Then he said, "He wants to hit you. How do you do it? No problem. No <laughs> problem. That's what I'm worried about. It's the no problem I'm worried about. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay." If you could tell him I'm a Christian priest, I never hit anybody. <laughs> okay. It's a, re a release of energy. I I is that how you would describe it? Yeah. Although it looks easy, I'm finding the combination of balance, coordination and strength incredibly hard to put into practice. Uh, yeah. Jiu I will practice. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Master. Next morning, my training at the Kung Fu school starts in earnest, and I've joined a company of 17 year olds in the hope of getting fit and agile. I'm not prepared for what follows. From the first moment, my coach treats me like a boot camp novice. 
知道。这样。I had been reassured by Mr. Li Hu that it wouldn't be hard, just a few gentle warm ups to loosen the tendons. But it turns out there's an hour of rigorous exercises, and that's before the classes even begin. This is supposed to make you relax. This is supposed to make me relax. <laughs> I can't relax. There's a gallon of human blood in the body, and it's all trying to get into my head. I'm on a... I can't see it. Okay. 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 By mid morning, my illusions about keeping up are beginning to crumble. I'm just holding this pose. So hard. That was so nasty. I was just so tough. They start here as young as four and stay for as long as 13 years. What do you think? I've been placed in the care of Wang, one of the seniors. He's at the top level, and I'm at the bottom. <laughs> The Chinese see training of this sort as being good for the body and the mind. But none of these students here are destined to become monks. They will go on to become bodyguards, instructors, and kung fu display artists. The trouble is, it just uses every single muscle in, in, that I haven't used for the last, I don't know how many years. And so, you know, my whole body is complaining. So. I know I've got two, three hours of absolute agony in front of me. It's just so many different instructions, so many different moves at the same time, trying to keep them in your head. My body won't do them. By midday, any reserves that I might have had have completely gone. I'm going to stand up. Well, I, can't, I just can't take any more instruction. <coughs> my body is crying out every inch of my body is crying out to stop. It just doesn't want to do any more. It just wants to lie down and go to sleep. Okay. I've got no idea why they're reeling those chains around.
Mr. Lee Hu had agreed not to treat me as a guest, but as one of the boys. He was as good as his word. Oh, this is my bunk. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yes. Well, this room's about as brutal as the exercise room. I, I don't want to be... I'm not really sure that it's possible, mate. I'm just not sure that it's possible at all. You know, right now I just want to, I just want to fly home. Really. It is utterly and totally alien in every single sense. Buddhists believe that our attachment to people and things is the root of all suffering. And that's because in life, nothing is ever still. Everything changes. So the road to enlightenment is through non-attachment to this ever-changing world. That philosophy was brought to China by an Indian Buddhist monk called Bodhidharma. His monument lies at the top of a hill beyond the pagoda forest where successive generations of Shaolin abbots are buried. I always thought that when Buddhists died, their ashes were spread to the wind, but these monuments wouldn't look out of place in Highgate Cemetery. Whatever happened to the notion of non-attachment? But further up the hill is the place where it all began. 1,500 years ago, Bodhidharma came and meditated here. He sat facing a wall for nine years. The cave where he attained enlightenment lies below. This is where it's locked. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. No, I do bloody mind actually. What fascinates me as a Church of England vicar is that he went back down the hill to the temple and introduced this new form of Buddhism, which kicked out all the sort of doctrinal and theological nonsense which were going on at the time. And he said, just forget it. All you have to do is meditate and practice your martial arts. And it's through that experience and that experience alone that you will gain enlightenment. None of this you know, intellectualization of, of the notion of the divine, the notion of nirvana, uh, the notion of God. Just get on with it. Chan Buddhism then spread northwards from here across China and then eventually ended up in Japan as Zen Buddhism. Started here. Amazing. Well, it didn't start there, it started there, I would imagine. It was like watching my life in car crash, really. I suddenly started, my cat, I kept on thinking about my cat, and then for some reason my children going down slides, and there was, I'm afraid, untold women's breasts. Everything just sort of kept crashing into this silence that I, I was hoping for, really. Because uh, 
，必须要使自己的内心一念不起。所以，因为你在做呢，他当然他是自己的心静不下来，做时间长了就可以了。嗯。嗯 I obviously need to、uh, practice a great deal to clear my my head. In the West, we are inhabiting a living space where we are constantly assaulted by images, by sounds, by what other people want us to do, want us to buy, and therefore the times when we are actually at peace are so very few that I think we have lost the understanding of how to be at peace. <sighs> 嗯、uh, ，It's hard for me to answer this question. 嗯，阿弥陀佛。嗯，谢谢大师。再见。嗯Over the next week, I settle into a tortuous routine of punishing mornings at the school. It's not really a place I like to be. Okay. Five in the afternoons, I'm at the monastery where my training is beginning to pay off. I'm learning the grammar now. Somehow that worked. That one. Very good. Good. Well done. Although I'm immersing myself in the daily life of the monastery, I really feel like I'm treading water. I'm gaining no spiritual insights here. Part of my problem is that Shaolin, like all religious communities, has one foot in the modern world. It's simply no longer a place of retreat. Every day there's a huge influx of sightseers. There is some spirituality here. I felt it, but with all the new commercial pressures, I wonder if I can really find enlightenment here. 但是，越来越难，所以我要沉浸在训练。在训练中，我感觉我像一个海绵球。然后，再来，再来，一种暴露，然后啪，这一拳就打上了。这叫开弓量。A monkey in cowboy boots. No, they're not for practice comfort. They're just for walking around. Do you like my boots? I like them. Ah, P-Zoo is also a part of the main thing. It's just from the country. I don't like to kick anyone with those boots. I've never kicked anyone with those boots. Have you kicked anyone with your slippers? China, no. No, I'm I'm a Christian priest, so I'm not really encouraged to kick people like that. Ah, China, do that. Okay. This is getting more and more weird by the minute. Are we meditating at the moment? Ah. You are now in meditation. Ah. You are now in meditation. At the end of the day, the monks collect the takings. It's starting to feel like a giant Buddhist theme park. Outside. The sight of more monks practicing their routines for a TV crew makes up my mind. It's almost a brand, really. And I think the abbot here 
is savvy enough to really know that. But I'm not sure that the Shaolin brand has a great deal to do with, with Buddhism, actually. Um, even less, I fear, to do with meditation. I've heard that there's a monk about a day's trek through the mountains. He lives near a place called the Sh Sanyang Stronghold. I've been told that he has special healing powers, whatever that means, and um, that he has separated himself off from this monastery to set up a much smaller community and that he is the exponent, he is the real, he's the business in terms of what Shaolin Buddhism should be and, and what, it, what it really represents. Before I go, Mr. Li Hu offers some typically cryptic tips about the importance of flowing movement. From the beginning and to the end, only one movement. Only one movement. Yeah. And this is the one. Never stop. Yes, you keep going. Uh, like the, the flowing water. Like the flowing water. And the clouds. Uh, yes. It's all one movement. Uh, all one flowing movement. Uh, yes, yeah. flowing, like the flowing cloud, flying clouds. Yeah. Never stop. Okay. Never stop. Yeah. If we get the spirit, we can become the god. The Sangwang stronghold is an eight-hour journey through the mountains on extremely improbable paths. It's a monastery that's been recently rebuilt by the mysterious ex-monk from Shaolin, Shidi Jiang. It's five and a half thousand feet up the mountains. See that building? Almost camouflaged in the mountain. That's where we're going. That looks extraordinary. My name is Peter. <laughs> okay, <hello. laughs> Shidi Jiang has sent some of his young novices ahead to meet me. Right, okay, let's go. No, I, I carry this, I've carried it all the way, so it's very kind of you, but I must carry it all the way. Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> It's quite a drop. It's quite a drop. The paths get steeper, more winding, cut deep into the mountains. Finally, I see it. Could this place be my Shangri-La? The master, Shidi Jiang, appears to be as enigmatic as the religion he practices. This to practice what? There's that word again. Practice. The thing that Bodhidharma brought. This one? Mm. Okay, no problem. What does it really mean?
Is it getting up time then? The rigors and horrors of Tagao have taken their toll, and I slept in. At least I've got my new suit, bought for a tenor in Deng Feng at the foot of the mountain. I've definitely chosen the wrong colour suit. Thank you. Thank you. I've been summoned to the master for some other reason. The rest of the morning gets even stranger. stage in the National Theatre about three years ago. Except it lasted for one hour. A moment later, the smiling showman becomes a god, practising on the edge of an abyss. That must be quite a steep drop there. This time, you can do it in your own way. You can do it in your own way. I rejoin the ranks of the humble. It seems here that the most ordinary of activities are performed as a series of flowing movements. And this includes a 2,000 foot climb made daily by the monks to bring in supplies from the valley below. There seem to be about 20 monks Everybody, by and large, does everything. Everybody cooks, everybody sweeps, everybody serves at table. It's a complete community. It seems that they don't meditate here. All they practice is movement. It's graceful, beautiful, almost ballet. But it's a million times harder than the Shaolin martial arts. Once again, I'm having trouble keeping up, and all this isn't doing anything for my head. It just doesn't seem that any of the dots join up anywhere. You know, one master teaches one move, another master teaches something completely different, another master teaches something completely different. And, you know, to try and find out which is the right move, which is the authentic move, you know, you're just 
stuffed in some soup, really. I'm going to let them get on with it, and then I'm going to talk to the master. If I can find him at supper, and I'm going to say, could he spare me half an hour just to teach me, take me through that one move? Um, because at the moment, I'm just 10 yards behind all the time. Once again. <coughs> Why in this place of stillness do I feel such frustration? Why is Zen so so difficult to to comprehend? This reason is very simple. It is just between the Chan and the Mu, very deep understanding. Only this environment and the Tao and the Shaolin is different. How can you be peaceful? Ah, so these inner peace, 这种烦恼，啊，都是由内心所生。但是，啊，你要要很好的寻找寻找自己，为什么不平静？那、哎、是不是什么原因所造成的不平静？要很好的想一想。因此说，要学禅，啊，要把说思考的一些问题来，啊，要放弃。是有禅入悟，在学悟之前，必须先认识禅。啊，禅，就像今天上午扛东西，从下面扛东西，这就是一种禅的体现。任何事情都是在不断的变化，啊，包括你在那个英国的一些平时的一些生活当中所遇到的一些这一些种种的一些障碍，这都是暂时的，啊，事物是在不断的变化。我刚才跟你讲这个天空的鸟那么自然，哎，飞翔，啊，你看这个树木，哎，多么平静，哎，有风的时候它可以随风可以摆动，没有风的时候非常平静，啊，真正的学禅，认识禅，啊，必须和大自然融为一体，哎，很和谐，啊，很轻松，很自由自在，啊。这样才有一个健康的身体，啊，一个良好的心态，啊，能更好的排除种种障碍。Maybe I was more wound up than I thought. 哈哈。Okay. I have a lot of realizing to do. He was right. You know, in the West, we we look to everything else to do that for us. We look for everything else to still us. We look for football or films or videos or sex or fags or beer or everything. We look for everything. We've got so lazy. We just look for everything else to do that for us. You know, as a priest, I see, I, I see people that are in pain. I also see people that are happy. And the Christian, the Christian message is, well, just give it to God. And in, in a sense, that's equally as oblique as the Zen message. But the Zen message says, it's down to you. It's not down to some God. It's down to you, mate. You've got to make your peace with yourself, and、um, I'm not sure I've ever allowed myself to do that. Delicate, precise, and he makes it look effortless and easy. Over the next week, I put the master's advice into action and stopped thinking. I just immersed myself in the daily life. 
I'm now getting a sense of how this place works. This community is virtually self-sufficient, tacitly overseen by two elderly nuns that have been here for over 50 years, long before Shidi Jang arrived. There is also a young novice nun, like me, learning the hard way. Our food is vegetarian. Carrots, radishes and potatoes from the garden or derived from the wildflowers that grow nearby, especially chrysanthemums. The monks share the cooking and everything just goes on in its own quiet way. Shidi Jiang shows me the herbs he uses for remedies, for heart and skin complaints. All our remaining time is devoted to practice. I thought I would miss alcohol. I don't miss it at all. I thought I would miss meat. Don't miss it at all. I thought I would miss the odd sneaky can of Pepsi Cola. Don't miss it at all. The odd packet of toffees. Don't miss it at all. Fags is hard. I'm kind of here. I'm going to see you. I'm the master has decided I'm ill, full of toxins. So, Are you sure? I am apparently suffering from a variety of infections and illnesses. That would be breakfast, I think. Okay. Very sore. If you could tell Master, that's very sore. Yeah. I do. My throat. I do. I discover from Shidi Jiang that he is harnessing an indefinable inner life force called Qi that Buddhists believe is inside us and part of all living things. At the heart of Qi for humans is the deep bellied breathing that brings both control and relaxation. He shows me in a way that is unembarrassed and forthright direct and honest. It's a completely different way of harnessing and controlling one's whole being. And so I've had to begin again, starting with just the breathing. OK. 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 And at practice, it's just the same. Maybe I've been making it too complicated. I've been looking for rules and guidelines where there aren't any. Very slowly, the penny drops. It's all about breathing, isn't it? It's all about the complement of the breath with the movement, the action of the breath with the movement. That's the chi. And then that rhythm is reflected in everything. I can see now that this is meditation. I've never been able to see that before. So simple, so beautifully. Elegantly. Simple. At last. At last. I understand. I understand. Why was something so so simple, so difficult to grasp? 
Well, I'm so grateful to you for enlightening me. Thank you. Thank you. I've definitely crossed a threshold. I've intuitively learned how to integrate breathing and movement. And through that movement, found the stillness of mind that you get through meditation. Christianity is about being attached to this thing called God and all the doctrines that come with it. And I read last night that one of the Buddhist teachers was saying to his students, if you meet Buddha along the road, you should kill him. Um, and that's probably taking non-attachment further than most, but I can understand, I can understand what they're saying. As, as Christians, we are yeah, deeply attached to, to an awful lot of things. And also, a lot of those things we hold in a state of affection. Uh, you know, it's not necessarily bad stuff, it's also good stuff. You know, how do the Buddhists view attachment to family, attachment to children? Um, I must ask. How old were you when you began living like this? Thirteen. Did you leave school at thirteen? Hmm, not high school. What's it like being surrounded by all these men? Hmm, at first I felt a little uncomfortable. But then, after a while, I just took them as my own brothers and sisters. I just got used to it. Slowly, but surely, I got used to it. 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 You say you love this place, but doesn't Buddhism teach non-attachment? When the two older nuns, when um, when they die, will you feel comfortable about taking on this, this their legacy, taking on their tradition on your own? Hmm. The master wasn't here the other day, and I noticed a lot of hanging around and chatting. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know it's true, you know it's true. <laughs> I, was, I, I was working very hard, of course. I was sweeping the terrace, and you, you guys, you were just hanging around chatting. This is, this is called the combination of practicing and resting. <laughs> What's really struck me here is that I think for the first time, for a very, very long time, I've seen genuine male physical affection, which has nothing to do with sexuality at all, 
They will hold hands and they'll put their arms around each other, they'll massage each other, but not in a sexual way. And that's a very rare thing to see. And as a man, it has really made me feel how lacking we are in our society because any form of male affection is seen as, you know, either homosexual or part of some sort of show. It just shows us how much we've lost in the West associating affection with sexuality. Inexplicably, I'm there. I'm not even thinking about it. I'm just doing it. Doing Zen and martial arts with a group of people who look out for each other. It is love. Unselfish. Non-possessive. And then to keep going. How? <coughs> yes. And I'm filled with a deep sense of belonging. Belonging to the whole group. Good. Perhaps that's what non-attachment is about. What an irony. I'd never thought about it this way before. What I now realize, after all the pain of the last four weeks, is that the way to this rather blissful state is through these very simple but hard-won disciplines. You have all been... <laughs> Goodbye. Rock out, Johnny. Thank you. At last, I'm with one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Master. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Let's go, let's go. Next week, I'm journeying and sleeping rough with the mystic holy men of the Himalayas. So join Peter Owen Jones, the extreme pilgrim, as the journey for enlightenment continues next Friday night at nine. Now, the quiz where the best answer wins. Peter Serafinowicz and Rich Hall play QI next to on BBC Two or switch over for a new series charting British music history through the 50s and 60s, Pop Britannia, over on BBC Four. <laughs>